It's UIKit time again! Today, we're happy to introduce UIKit 3.15. It comes with a new drop bar component, refines the drop JavaScript, and brings smaller improvements to the drop down, nav, nav bar, and more. Let's get right into it! In the last UIKit 3.14 release, we heavily improved the drop component together with its drop downs. This release brings you a new drop bar component which provides a section-like style for the drop component. Unlike drop downs, drop bars stretch the full width or height of the viewport and are often used for mobile navigation. For example, you can make the drop bar look like a modal window or an off-canvas sidebar, but the main difference is that the drop bar opens below the nav bar, so the nav bar is visible and can be used for further navigation. The drop bar is a CSS component, only responsible for the style. To add its behavior and animations, we had to update the drop component and refine it with new features. There is a new stretch option that stretches dropdowns or especially drop bars to fill the size of the viewport. You can also only stretch them to the X or Y axis. This behavior is very similar to the old justify alignment from the position option, which has now been removed. In addition to the UIKit animation classes, we had to add two new animation types to slide and reveal drop bars from all four directions. Slide animations slide the drop bar and its content from the chosen direction, while in the reveal animations the content stays in place and looks like it is being revealed by the drop bar. If you set the animate out option to true, the animation will also be applied when closing the drop bar. When drop bars stretch to the height of the viewport and their content is larger, you can scroll within the drop bar. You can prevent the page in the background from scrolling using the new background scroll option. But we also improved existing options for the drop component. As you know, drop downs automatically shift and flip to fit into the viewport or any other element defined as their boundary. In addition, you could set the boundary align option to true so that dropdowns align to the boundary instead of the toggle. But this also meant that you could no longer set a custom boundary. That's why UIKit 3.15 removes the boundary align option and instead introduces a new target option. Similar to the boundary, you can set a CSS selector to define target the dropdown aligns to. This way, you can use both boundary and target options. If the new target option is set to a large container, you may want to position the drop inside the container and not outside, to set the new inset option to true. With the flip option, you could disable shifting and flipping behavior. Since this depended on the position direction, it was not obvious whether you disabled shifting or flipping. Now there are both shift and flip options, which can be set to false, without knowing the position. Additionally, you can prevent the drop from repositioning when scrolling by setting the new auto-update option to false. To show you all the new features in action, we have completely reworked the UIKit tests and documentation. Now that the navbar stays visible when toggling the drop bar, we just had to update the navbar toggle icon. It now changes from a menu icon to a close icon with a smooth animation. Pretty nice, huh? UIKit 3.15 also comes with a new large modifier for the dropdown and navbar components. So in addition to the default dropdown, you can also have a dropdown with a larger padding. This may come in handy if you have a content-rich dropdown which stretches to the width of the navbar. The dropdown, navbar dropdown and drop bar now have less color mode variables. This means that all UI elements perfectly adapt to their background color. Next, we have a small less improvement for the navbar component, which was bugging us for quite some time. In addition to the horizontal padding, navbar items have new less variables to set the gaps between items. The horizontal padding is perfect if your navbar items have background colors or borders, but in all other cases you may just want a gap between items, so the first and last navbar items perfectly align to the site's content. Parent icons in the nav component are no longer compiled into CSS. Instead, we use the JavaScript component just like with the slide nav and close icons. 
As a result, the icons automatically change their color and are not compiled multiple times. The removing the UK nav parent icon from the nav component causes breaking changes, so make sure to use the UK nav parent icon attribute on items instead. We also added a parent icon to the navbar component, so you can now indicate that navbar items have a drop-down. Additionally, we added an extra style to the nav component. The secondary style modifier is specifically designed for navs which have subtitles. These are often used in MEGA menu dropdowns. Of course, UIK 3.15 comes with a lot of other smaller improvements and tons of fixes. For example, there are new Z-index and box sizing utility classes, and the logo component now supports the picture element. For the full list of features and fixes, check out the change log. There are breaking changes for the nav parent icon, the drop JavaScript component options, the navbar dropdown, and some less variables which got renamed, so please take a look at the migration guide. As you probably noticed, this release was all about improving menus in UIKit to give you all the tools to create modern navigation for your site. Now it's your turn to try them out. As always, we're looking forward to your feedback, so let us know what you think about this release in the comments below.